Hey everybody, welcome back to Investing with Wesley. In my previous videos, I've talked to you about how to create a very safe, very diversified portfolio. And although there is nothing wrong with those videos, and I still stand by the mock-up of how to make a very good dividend producing diversified equity portfolio. If some of you are adverse to risk and don't like how volatile stocks in general could be, even though in those portfolios there's some of the safer stocks, then pay attention because this is the portfolio you're going to want to know everything about. What I'll be talking to you about today is called the Risk Parity Portfolio or the All Weather Portfolio made famous by Ray Dalio. Now, you could do any research you want on this portfolio, and if it's good enough for Ray Dalio's family and his multi-billion dollar clients that trust him with his money, it's probably good enough for you too. Now, this allocation strategy works a little bit different than your standard like 60-40 split portfolio where you'd have 60% stocks, 40% bonds, giving you some sort of balance. The risk parity portfolio uses risk amount to allocate the proper percentages amongst that entire portfolio. So as an example, stocks are three times as risky or as volatile as bonds are. So where most people would have a 60-40 split, 60% 60 being in stocks, you'd really have a large amount of risk in that portfolio since 60% are stocks, which are three times more risky than the 40% of bonds you have. And even if you flipped the two and put 60% bonds and 40% stocks, because stocks are three times as volatile as bonds, you'll still have a very, very risky portfolio. In Ray Dalio's All Weather or Risk Parity Portfolio, he only has about 30% in stocks, 55% in bonds, and the rest in commodities like precious metal and agriculture. Now what this does is creates a balanced portfolio that's diversified a bunch of different classes. And on top of all that, matches the amount of risk and volatility that each one represents. So you'll still have the majority of your upside potential located in stocks, even though it's only taking up 30% of this portfolio. The rest will be bonds mixed with a little bit of commodities. But what you have to think about is there's a time and a season that each one of these things does very well in. So in situations like we are in today where there's high inflation and high interest rates, commodities do the best. In situations where there is low interest rate and low inflation, then stocks will probably do the best. There'll be a bunch of different combinations between high interest rate and low inflation or high inflation with low interest rates. But between those three different categories, bonds, stocks, and commodities, you can create a really good balanced portfolio that can encompass all of that for very little risk. Now, if you're wondering how stocks are three times more risky than bonds, you have to look at its volatility compared to something else. So if you look at the volatility of Bitcoin compared to the US stock market, Bitcoin is extremely risky compared to the US stock market. If you look at the US stock market compared to government bonds, US stock market is extremely risky compared to government bonds. So I'll throw up a chart between the US stock market and the US bond market, and you could see the difference between the volatility of the two. Now, obviously bonds will still be somewhat volatile because of the rise and fall of interest rates, but they're nowhere near as volatile as the equity market or the US stock market. Okay, so let's look at the details of how the risk parity portfolio matches to just investing in the overall stock market. Because to this day, nothing really can beat the overall stock market. Now, it is extremely risky, it's extremely volatile, and in any given downturn, you could lose as much as 30% overnight because of how volatile the stock market can be. But on average, it's always given returns of 10 to 12% consistently. Well, what about the risk parity portfolio? What are some of the returns and what are some of the risks involved with investing in this portfolio? So back testing this portfolio from 1984 until 2015. And the reason I'm stopping it there is because in the most recent present, a few things have changed, which I will cover after this. But from 1984 to 2015, the All Weather Portfolio has done exceptionally well. So well that you would have made money year over year over 86% of the time with your worst year losing 1.3%. An average loss of 1.9% and your worst year being in 2008 
with only 3.8% of a loss. So as far as low volatility and low risk goes, this sounds amazing. Just think about the very last statistic I said. In 2008, when the stock market crashed 30 plus percent and your only loss was 3.8 or 3.9%, that's extremely good. But is it just little to no risk and is there any upside? Sure, not losing money is great, but I'd like to make money too. Well, let's talk about backtesting the gains. Again, in that 1984 to 2015 period, you would have averaged almost market level returns. You wouldn't have hit those 12%, but backtesting between that period would have given you 10% on average return year over year. So not only are you getting the average market return of 10%, but you're also getting almost none of the downside, none of the volatility and none of the risk by having this risk parity portfolio. And if you were a big hedge fund or had a very good investment advisor that knew exactly what they were doing, you could have leveraged those positions like Ray Dalio did and gotten 15 to 20% returns some years. Now, for most people, I would never recommend you leverage your investment accounts because in the event that you're wrong, you're wrong to that extent as well and could end up owing a lot of money. But nonetheless, to get market returns with almost none of the risk is extremely good. But that's just in the designated period that we mentioned. What about in the present? Because in 2020 and in the crash just after, a few things have changed. So let's talk about the 2020 COVID crash. Well, when stocks dipped about 33%, Ray Dalio's all weather portfolio or the risk parity portfolio only dipped about 6%. Still compared to the overall stock market, that's extremely good. And like I mentioned, it has a historical return of about nine and a half to 10%. So even in the crash of 2020, losing 6% is not that bad. But if you pull up a risk parity portfolio, compare it to the overall stock market, you'll see that in late 2021, 2022, when this big crash has happened because of inflation, you'll see that the risk parity portfolio kind of falls apart and loses almost as much as the overall stock market itself. So what gives? It was great before and all of a sudden it's not now. And that's because the risk parity portfolio as described online through a number of websites uses US government bonds to make up the bond matrix itself and US stocks like the S&P 500 in the stock matrix. Either way, it's very exposed to the US markets. So when something happens in the US economy, like say red hot inflation that the Federal Reserve needs to attack, well, it needs to one, raise interest rates. Raising interest rates immediately affects asset prices. And when interest rates go up because of the fight against inflation, stock prices go down because stocks do well in inflation. Likewise, when interest rates go up, bond prices go down. So when the US raises interest rates, the US bonds you've been investing in, those prices go down. So you had this one moment in time where you were very heavily weighted in the US economy and you suffered the price for it. Now, luckily there's a way to beat this. And what it is, is just to diversify into other countries as well. So as an example, I am currently employing the risk parity portfolio with my own investments. However, instead of doing it exactly like you see online, where it's heavily weighted in US bonds and US stocks, I still have all of my stocks in US stocks, but half of the bonds I'm investing in are international intermediary bonds, meaning international bonds that have about seven years left to maturity. Now, if this recent upward trend we're experiencing isn't a reversal, but more of just a bull trap, and there's potential for the markets to go careening back down again. Now, if that happens, will I see my portfolio suffer the same amount of losses or the same downturn that the all weather portfolio you find everyone online? And the answer is no, because I'm invested heavily as well in international portfolios, as well as mixed in with very good commodities like gold, oil, agriculture, and other commodities. But before you go matching your portfolio to mine, you really have to consider your own risk tolerance and the fact that this is something completely new. I'm not really following the rules of the risk parity portfolio in that it should be split between US government bonds and US stocks. I'm adding my own thing to it and therefore I can't even back test properly to see if I'll still be getting the same returns 
that the risk parity portfolio will get. For all I know, I'll get only 6% or 5% and not the 10% that this portfolio does. But I feel like I've been on here rambling too much. So all you really need to know is that the risk parity portfolio measures the risk and allocates into your portfolio based on that risk. So it'll be mostly bonds, then stocks with a little bit in commodities as well to balance out the portfolio. You need to understand if you're going to attempt to do this portfolio yourself, you'll need to understand the different economic situations and environments you could be in and which asset class does well in each of those environments. And then you need to pick the best ones for your situation. Me personally, I don't like the thought of losing 30 plus percent overnight in the event that the markets crash. Sure, I can get a greater return on average being about 11 or 12% by just leaving it in the S&P 500, leaving it and forget it, I'll get a better return on average. But I'll also be susceptible to a greater loss on average. I would rather make just a little bit less money for way less risk than make more money for more risk. Either way, I highly encourage you to research it yourself, talk to your investment advisor about it, and see if this is something that might interest you. If you have any questions, comments, or just want something addressed, I have a dedicated Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and now also TikTok, so feel free to message me there. Either way though, the choice is yours, and I'll see you in the next episode.